Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Ask Marvin where we talk about your questions about the stock market, investing, or anything else that will help you reach your goals of financial freedom. So for this week's Ask Marvin, we have a question from Karen who's from Rome, Italy. Uh, you all know the context that the market has dropped severely over the past few months. So what Karen is asking is this, uh, JFC has dropped from 250 pesos to 195. Her question is, should I, should I be worried now or should I buy now? Uh, that's a great question, Karen, and there's a lot of questions also that are similar in nature, with, especially with Jollibee. As you all know, uh, the stock has dropped uh, severely and for a blue chip company and a lot of uh, investors are pretty much excited and hyped up about the stock. Uh, it dropping has caused a lot of concern, uh, not just for uh, people who are doing peso cost averaging, but for people also who have just started now and just experienced a loss for the very first time. So before I go and answer the question, uh, Karen, you have to understand, especially for those who are relatively new in the market, uh, things like this happen. It's normal for stocks to go down. It's part of the game. When stocks become too expensive, when more sellers come in, when there's bad news, uh, stocks normally reverse and also go down. So what you're actually seeing in Jollibee right now is part of its normal progression. It has happened also several times in the past. So how you come out of this will either determine whether you learn from it and you can use it as a springboard in the future to earn money or you can come out depressed and sad and stay away from the market altogether. And I hope that you pick the former, that you have the discipline, use this time to learn more. But as you use this time to learn more, it will actually encourage you and build your discipline and strategy to become profitable over the long term. That's what I always say, your goal in the stock market is not to just to be profitable when the market is going up, but you should create your own strategy that will allow you to be profitable regardless of what scenario, regardless of what market is there, because you have created something that will help you to be profitable over the long term. So, uh, as you all know, we just ended all of our events for 2016, but I'd like to invite you to our seminars this 2017. Uh, our calendar kicks off this February 4 and 5 uh, in Cagayan de Oro, where we'll talk about fundamental and technical analysis. The same with uh, Cebu, which happens two weeks after in February 17 and 18, which we'll talk about still technical and fundamental analysis. And I'm very excited for our new course in Manila, which will be an extensive uh, seven module course, four topics on technicals and three topics on technical analysis. Then a few weeks after that, we're going back to Japan for uh, March 17 and 19 for Stock Smarts Japan and Davao. We're going to do Stock Smarts this April 8 and 9. Uh, with regards to fundamental and technical analysis as well. And for those that want to learn more about stock investing and want to uh, learn about it from our books, uh, you can log on to marvingirmo.com and see all of the books that we have written uh, all about stock investing, trading, and how you can actually begin investing in the stock market. So, uh, Karen, to answer your question about Jollibee, I'm just going to give a quick update already on what's happening in the company so at least you know. Uh, you have the conviction and you have, uh, I guess, the ability to know on how you're going to react and how, how you're going to decide if you're going to buy the stock or not, if you if you will add some more if you're, or if you will actually trade it as well. You have to understand that conviction in the market is what will carry you and will allow you to be able to make rational decisions in your trade. So I've broken it down into three based on news, based on what's happening in the fundamentals and based on what's happening in the technicals. Uh, you have nothing to worry about though based on uh, what's happening in the brand itself. Jollibee in itself is still one of the strongest brands here in the country, one of the biggest and one of the most recognized names, not just in the fast food industry but uh, across every other, I guess, big corporation here. So a lot of people have big confidence on how Jollibee is, how it works and how it's actually expanding. So let me give you an update on just a couple of news bits uh, that have uh, hit Jollibee over the past few weeks. Number one is Jollibee sold its position from Chow Fun for 80 million pesos. This just happened a few days ago. It's actually Jinja uh, Asian Cafe in the US. So uh, this is part of their strategy to focus on uh, companies which they believe have bigger growth potential and they're trying to let go of other companies where uh, it has been probably lagging in earnings and not meeting uh, expectations that they would have that they have set uh, beforehand. Um, and prior to that, they also sold 
uh, around 650 million pesos worth of of value to San Pinhuang. It's part of their uh, exposure in China, uh, which uh, Yon Checking, uh, their uh, one of their subsidiaries, there with over 300 plus uh, chains or restos have been established. So uh, again, as what I mentioned, this is part of their move to concentrate in other uh, uh, chains, other fast food brands uh, inside Jollibee, which is more uh, that produces a bigger amount of earnings. This could be Mang Inasal, this could be Chow King, this could be the Jollibee brand itself. So this is a move for them to actually just focus on what they're actually good at. Uh, this is something that they did also a couple of years ago uh, when, they, when they sold uh, Delhi France, when they sold, uh, I think, Ma uh, Manong Pepe, some sort of uh, Carinderia style that's fast food chain that's a bit clean that served home cooked meals for them. So it's been a style that Jollibee has been doing through the years that they've been focusing on uh, brands that they've been really good at and they try to let go of companies or brands that they know uh, they don't have, I guess, a stronger future with. Uh, on the fundamental aspect, you have to understand this as well. Uh, ROE of Jollibee is still relatively high at 17. That equity ratio, the, the, the strategy and how they leverage your finances is still at normal levels. Nothing much has changed uh, with regards to how they're running the company with, with its growth projection and how they're actually uh, efficiently earning over the past year. Uh, just something though that uh, might be a cause of alarm, might be a red flag for a lot of investors. This is the five-year net income of Jollibee. So you've seen from 2011 to 2014, Jollibee's net income has been steadily increasing but something happened uh, this 2015 uh, last year where its income slid uh, went down a bit and stopped its uh, upward progression so something something to be as an investor something that you should watch out for uh, not, something that you should not be scared of but it's something that you should actually try to consider to see if they will rebound this 2016 and they should at least go higher than 6 billion pesos if they if they falter it might be something that uh, would be could be a red flag but based on uh, their growth based on them trying to build 1000 stores already just for the Jollibee brand in the next few weeks uh, they might be they might possibly rebound from it and might might have better income in the next few years so uh, I'll watch out for this and I'll update you more uh, over the next uh, quarters with regards to how they're performing in terms of their income. So you have to remember, uh, prices always follow income. Uh, the higher the income of the company, the prices will always follow it. Investors love companies that are continually growing. Uh, so so I'll keep you updated on that as well. Another thing though about Jollibee, its PE ratio is still very expensive. No matter how much it's dropped from 250 to 195, the stock is still expensive. So uh, uh, compared to Ayala Land, Ayala Land is relatively cheaper already. Uh, it has dropped from 41 to around 30 pesos. The stock is cheaper, while, while Jollibee on the, the other hand, it has dropped from 250 to 195. The stock is still relatively expensive. So you have a good company that has a good brand that's earning quite efficiently, but has tapered a bit in its earnings in 2015 and has dropped a bit now, but even though it has dropped, the stock is still relatively expensive. So now let's move on to the technicals. Uh, the picture here showed it properly that uh, the stock is still in a downtrend. The stock is still bearish. The stock is still headed down. And that's what I always say. Stock that's in a downtrend will continue to go down until proven otherwise. Nothing much has changed yet after it hit uh, a quick, the, after it hit its peak over the past few months. Uh, the stock has started to break down support upon support, layer upon layer, and it also broke down from the strongest support level last November. So a stock that's in a downtrend will continue to go down until proven otherwise. And what we're actually seeing now also from the stock is just a recipient of it uh, breaking down from another support level at 207, which happened just a few days ago. So again, if you're a position trader, it might be prudent for you to stay away from the stock first. Uh, we have no signs of reversal yet. Uh, I'll keep you updated when we close that level, when we see some sort of conviction or some sort of buying presence in the stock. But as of now, stock is currently 
breaking down, the stock is still bearish and you should stay away from it. Now for quick traders, what, what you need to watch out for is a key support range at 192. Even if you're a position trader, you should watch out for this as well. Uh, if somewhere around this point, you might expect some sort of buying uh, for the stock. However, uh, should it bounce back, the stock is still bearish. I'll repeat it. As a stock nears 192, there's a possibility that it could bounce back. However, if it bounces, it does not mean that the trend is already going up. This is just a uh, short-term movement uh, with regards to it being oversold. So now if you're a quick trader, a bounce from 192 would bring the stock back up to its previous support at 207 pesos per share. So for those doing quick trades, 192 to 207 is a possibility. However, if it fails to hold from 192, you may expect the stock to drop even further from 170 to around 181 to as low as 175 over the short term. So I repeat, the stock is bearish. If it fails to hold 192, it can drop to 181 or to as low as 175 pesos per share. Uh, for those who are trying to watch out for when it will actually turn bullish again, when it will reverse, allow me to update you. Uh, it's pretty much far still from uh, the strongest moving average that, that is protecting the stock uh, as well. This, the stock, but, uh, should it turn bullish, uh, you can peg it at around 234 pesos per share. Uh, right now, we're very far from that. So I'll keep you posted in the next few weeks. So uh, this is this, thank you so much for having me. It's such an awesome feeling to be part of your uh, trading and investing ex experience. So I hope whatever you see here uh, in the videos is something that adds value to you, allows you to uh, trade with conviction. So uh, don't use whatever I say as something that you will buy out of uh, just because I, I would say it. My, my suggestion is you use this as a reference for you to be able to analyze stocks on your own because at the end of the day you make money in the market by the decisions that you make by your own strategy and by your own conviction and that's what i always say trade well trade strong trade smart i'll see you all again soon for the next version of ask marvin so thank you so much and god bless you all